evening, Vixens family, and welcome to a very special episode of Vixens Live. My name's Pete Laser. Once again, a pleasure to be your host as we come together and celebrate all things Melbourne Vixens. We have been doing Vixens Live. This is our 12th episode this season. And I tell you what, it doesn't get any bigger than this with the focus well and truly on Sunday's grand final. It has been a huge week, a huge build up, and we just can't wait. Tonight's Vixens Live show is proudly brought to you by Deakin. Deakin University, every single course is backed by industry experts. So you'll get the job you want with a degree that employers want. Deakin, progressive real world learning. Well, it is a special edition because it is grand final week. And I said after our semi final episode to my co host, Sherelle McMahon, if we win, then you are coming back to join me because we need everything going in our favour. And the best thing we can do is get the best netball of all time to come back and join us as co host. It's a very, very warm welcome back to Vixens Live to Sherelle McMahon. Shazza, we've made it. Grand final, here we come. <laughs> we got there. And as you said, we had that chat in the Vixens Live uh, in the lead into that uh, final earlier. And yes, so here I am. I couldn't say no to you. And I just, you know, as I've gotten a little bit older, those superstitions have just become a little bit stronger. So if it worked in the first final, let's do it again in the, in the grand final. Why not? That's exactly right. And that's what I said to you. I said, I'm the most superstitious person alive. You are coming back on this show. <laughs> and here we are. But in all seriousness, grand final week, from a playing perspective, I know you're still involved as a, an assistant coach and heavily involved, but from a playing perspective, talk us through grand final week at this level, because it, it just seems it's got a lot of coverage. It's getting a lot of media, which is fantastic. Talk us through it from a playing perspective. Yeah, it's been great, actually, hasn't it? And I was talking to Bianca Chatfield, who's up there a little bit earlier today, and she was saying that, you know, there's a little bit of feeling happening up in Brisbane, but, you know, the girls are getting lots of media and lots of support and attention from their home state, which is fantastic. So certainly the Vixens are hopefully feeling that love from Victoria down here. And, you know, it's the grand final week such an interesting one because you can be going about your normal thing that you're doing and then suddenly you remember you've got the game on and it'll be you know when i was experienced it was a real physical kind of feeling that you used to get with that memory so you know i think part of it is being able to control those emotions and the nervous energy that you have right throughout that week as it's leading up and these girls have had two weeks to be thinking about that. Um, that. That's really important. But then, you know, I think if you can keep things as, as normal as possible, structure the week as you normally would, don't change anything because what you've been doing has obviously worked well enough to get you into the grand final. So you really don't need to shift much, but just acknowledge that there are those extra nerves because this is the big game. So, you know, there are gonna be those few points of differences that you need to address. The biggest players, the best players, they stand up in these games, don't they? I know that you always loved playing in, be it for Australia or for the Phoenix or for the Vixens. These big games are where the big players make their names. Isn't it? This is where reputations are made. Yeah, certainly that can that can be the case for sure. And look, and I think that that's when you're playing at any level, really, the, the reason you're playing often is to try and get that success with the group of people at the end of the day. And so that that's what everyone's gunning for. And, you know, I think at the Vixens and, you know, you look across the, this league, but if we're talking about the Vixens, we've got players within this group who you can see want to be out there on court. You can see they want the ball in their hands in those big moments. You know, Know that they want to take that big intercept to turn the game or shoot that two-point shot or the long shot um, so that's what is a real strength of this team that it, it's like they you can see it in them they're living for these moments so um, I, I know with the girls that I've spoken to this week I know that they're just all really excited about it and just want to take it on and as you say make their mark so put your coaches hat on you and Susan Meany doing a lot of opposition analysis as well Never more important than this week. Can you can you give us an insight? Don't, don't tell us, of course, what's going on, but can you give us an insight as to as to sort of the things that you're looking for, but also how important it is to still play the Vixens way? 
Oh, that's crucially important. You know, you don't want to shift too much away from uh, your game style because I think, you know, the Vixens game style has, as I said before, it's what what has got them here and it's it's really solid. They've got some variation within there. So, um, you know, when, when I'm looking at scouting those other games, we'll look at either the attack end or the defence end um, and just have a look at their patterns of play and perhaps some things that have worked against um, their defence or broke down their attack line. So that's the sort of things that we look at when we're doing that. And look, I think, um, you know, this is, it's an interesting game for the Fever. They have been building across the season and have hit some really good form. And, you know, there's some great stuff to look at in their previous games as to, you know, what works for them, certainly, because a lot's been working. But there's some real opportunities there to, to break it down too. Let's hope so. I know you've been doing a big job down there because, you know, a lot of people wouldn't realise that, that you're doing it all from Melbourne as well. You're in the, the lockdown stage as, a, as I am and they're doing it for Vic this week. It's doing it for Vic. It's been the hashtag that has been going off. How do, how do the girls feel knowing that the Vicks are all supporting them? We're, we're trying to build them up, not drag them down with us at the moment. We're trying to pump them right up. How are the girls feeling? Yeah, look, I think they're really aware of what's happening here in Victoria and Melbourne. And any time you speak to them, they they always reference, you know, how difficult it is here and how lucky they feel to be able to be doing what they're doing. And this doing it for Vic uh, slogan and campaigns, I think it's amazing. It's on the dress. And I think it's a great campaign uh, because we are, we're all behind them and they feel that, they absolutely feel that. Um, I do hope though that they're not wearing the weight of <laughs> the state on their, the state's happiness on their shoulders uh, because I would have thought that anyone who is a netball fan here in Melbourne and in Victoria would be incredibly proud of what they have been able to achieve across this season. And this would just be the icing on the cake of, of what has always, already been something pretty special and pretty successful. But I do know that they are they are really keen to kind of provide that little bit of joy for us down here, that's for sure. And it gives us something to do on Sunday, which is even better. Don't worry about that. We will be very much looking forward to being in the lounge room. It's a big, big show, Vixens Live, this week. Let's get stuck into it. First up, let's take a look at this weekend's match because that's what it's all about, the grand final. I'm sure that everyone is aware of the details. It is Sunday, Nissan Arena in Brisbane. We're hosting the grand final. It's 1 o'clock daylight saving time down here, of course, 12 o'clock uh, up there in Brisbane this Sunday against the West Coast Fever, live on Channel 9. Do not miss a minute of the action. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of these two teams. And Shaz, you would be looking through all of these tapes, but not just the Vixens games against West Coast Fever, but all the West Coast Fever games, and of course, the Vixens games as well. We had two really interesting clashes with them this season. We got the points early on in round five, 68-59. And then in round 10, as we know, it was an amazing 63 all draw. We came from nowhere, 14 goals down which gives us belief, but we won't want to be doing that on Sunday. No, and you're right, there was the two quite different games. I mean, this is what I was saying before about the fever building and growing across the season. I think when we hit them in round five, they were still working some things out and we had a really solid win against them then, some really good performances from the Vixens. Um, and, yeah, it was, it was an interesting game, wasn't it, when we came from that 14 goals down and, um, you know, the ability to do that is something that's been, um, I've been really impressed with the resilience of this group. They've come from behind a couple of times. And I think those are the sort of experiences that can really help a team um, when when they are finding it difficult. There's Liz Watson on the ground again, which she often is, but look at her go, she's up, up nice and quick. And you don't forget, Pete, that last time we did play them, you see there it's Katie Ann Dehaney and, and Joe Weston out there uh, playing this game that um, we actually were missing the starting goalkeeper in Emily Mannix. So the, the defensive unit did a fantastic job to just be able to cover that loss because that's a big one against a team like Fever. Absolutely, it is. You and I have spoken, in fact, everyone's spoken about the super shot and we haven't used it overly much this year. But the second time we played, round 10, was a really good indicator as to when that can keep you in the game and it may well come into calculations this week as well. Hopefully we're out in front, it doesn't matter, and we just hold that lead. But it also shows that you've never really got the game won, but you've also, you're never out of the game, whatever the scoreline happens to be. Yeah, and that's exactly right. I, I think, you know, the super shot, um, 
has been widely discussed and different teams use it differently. And I've actually been really impressed with how the girls have adapted to the, the two-point shot because it came in very late in the season. So we didn't have a lot of time to really drill it and practice it. But I really do feel like the Vixens girls have a great sense of when they need to use that and when they can just keep chipping away at that one-point shot. So, and the, the great benefit of us, as we have spoken a lot about, is that all three or four of our goals, if we include Sasha McDonald on the bench as well, have that ability to shoot those long shots. And so that, that gives a great amount of confidence. And it's also, it also can be quite difficult to defend too when you've got three or two shooters out there anyway who can, who can do that. There's my favourite super shot of the whole season. Don't worry about that. That was very exciting watching that in the backyard. That was absolutely awesome. Just had the mobile phone out. The next door neighbours probably thought I was having a party that you're not allowed to have. But that was the favourite super shot of the week. Of course, it won't be a draw on Sunday. If the scores are tied, we go to extra time. And there's even extra, extra time now. You've got to win by three instead of two. It is it is just amazing. It's like this, the, the machinations and the rules and everything that happens, you, you do have to get your head around it, but you've also just got to play the ball that's in front of you. Yeah, you do. You've got to play what's in front of you and then and then respond. I mean, the Fever uh, have been really good at starting games. They, they come out of the blocks really strongly. And so that, that'll be something that the girls are looking at. They did that really well against Lightning uh, in their semi-final. So they'll be certainly looking to, to be able to do that and, and uh, put as much pressure on them as they can. But you're right, if, if, it does, if it is a draw, if we go into extra time, there's all sorts of implications, isn't there, with the two-point shot and how you might be able to play that out. It's a three-goal advantage now instead of just the two-goal that it would normally be in double extra time. So, look, it'll be – I'm just really excited, Pete. I, I think it's going to be a fantastic contest um, against what I believe have been the two strongest teams across the season. We always talk about pressure. There's no pressure like scoreboard pressure. And let's hope that we can make sure that is in our advantage come Sunday afternoon. Uh, thanks to Deakin Centre for Sport and Research, and in particular, the very clever Dr. Aaron Fox, who've been provided with some very interesting statistics mm. leading into Sunday about Vixen and Fever, uh, Vixens and Fever's season so far and their encounters. Two tight tussles, as we know, but also some of the the stats that go to big matchups. I don't think there's a bigger matchup, and we mentioned it earlier. Emily Mannix taking on Janelle Fowler. Now, M didn't play, as you say, in that game earlier on, sidelined in round 10. So Katie Ann took to the court against her Jamaican teammate. Fowler's been unbelievable. We know that. Shooting an amazing 96.8% efficiency in the preliminary final. That is unbelievable when it gets to shooting. That is something that you always pro, uh, pride yourself on and, and the greatest shooters do. How does how do we go into it a little bit differently this time? And does does our coach, Simone, go right out, Mannix, you're in, and we start differently than how we did in round 10? Yeah, well, look, to be honest, I don't know exactly what the starting lineup would be. Um, that is what has been happening for the last little while. Um, so we may see some changes. I mean, we even saw Joe Weston back there, and that's who was playing against Janelle Fowler uh, when we did make that big comeback from 14 goals down. And and probably what that does show you is that, you know, there's a huge height difference between Joe and Janelle. So when that ball's being lifted up, it was probably going to be really difficult for Joe, but it was the work that was done before that ball was delivered in there that created those opportunities for us to pull that margin back. So, you know, I think... It would be alarm bells ringing for me if you focus too much on Janelle Fowler because there's a huge amount of talent across this fever lineup right over the court. And if you turn your mind and focus too much on just one player, then you're in danger of letting others off the hook and, and not being aware of the other things that are going on. So, yes, a big part of the job is stopping that supply into Janelle. I mean, she is the most prolific goal shooter in this competition by the absolute length of the Flemington straight. And so that is a big part of the job. Um, but it is not just about stopping Janelle. It's about stopping everyone and then also being really efficient in attack and making the most of the opportunities that you do get. It is an interesting one, isn't it? Because you can look at it two ways. She shot 59 from 62 in that round 10 game. She's got more than 210 goals, more than the second place goal point scorer this year, or goal scorer, depending how you like to say it. It doesn't matter. She's got them covered. But then we look, I mean, the other, the other side of it is the super shot, which got us back into it. We outscored Fever 20 to 6 with super shots in round 5, 18 to 2 in round 10. So we can actually take something that works for us and use that against them. And that, that's going to be important as well. 
Yeah, well, potentially. I mean, this is the thing. I, I think what, um, you know, as I was talking about before, it's important to play that according to the situation out on court. So if you're feeling confident, I mean, that, part of our natural play is ending up taking long shots. So, you know, we've always encouraged right from the start of the season, um, the goal is to take those shots if they're confident, if they find themselves in that area, but don't get too focused on it. Of course, in that round 14, or not 14 match, in the round 10 match when we were down by 14, um, you know, that, that was the way we were getting ourselves back into the game. So we were kind of forced into it in some ways a little bit. But, you know, having that um, confidence to just do it um, when they feel is the right time it is really important. Um, but who knows? Who knows how it'll play out? We may, you know, there's been games where we haven't relied on the two-point shot much at all for the win. So um, that will be played according to, as you say, what, what happens in front of them. As we know, as you've always known, first 10 minutes, last five minutes, if the ball doesn't go in, it doesn't matter where you're shooting it from. You don't get anything. <laughs> it doesn't go through. That's so a very basic part of being a good shooter. Uh, now, we've talked about the shooting end and we've talked about our defence end as well. Let's talk about a couple of gun mid-quarters because, as you say, this is a really important part. So feeding into the, the goal circle, probably the most important part, the most important pass, of course, is the one that gets to the shooter in a good position. And we have got one of the best, if not the best, in Liz Watson. That's the West Coast fever, no slouch, and Verity Charles has been amazing as well. We look at some of the stats that Deacon Nini had given to us as well. The number one and number two best circle feeders in the league. Number one and three as far as going for a shot. I mean, this is unbelievable. Ensuring that Charles can't get her hands on the ball, or at least making it a, a tough pass into that circle. How important is that going to be and helping out our defence end as well? Very important. And of course, those two players most likely won't come up against each other if they're playing in the positions that they've been spending a little bit more time in. Although who knows, Pete, who knows what will happen in a grand yes. final. But um, this this matchup we wanted to look at um, the, the two best circle or the goal assist players in the league. And it's, it, it, as you said, it's such a crucial part of the game. I mean, you can be the world's best goal shooter, but if you haven't got someone to get the ball to you in the right position, then they're, they're, what's the point? So it's a crucial role. Um, and, you know, Verity Charles, she has had a fantastic season this year. And the speed that she plays the ball um, and that connection that she has into the circle has been really great to watch, actually. So, you know, whoever it is that comes up against her is going to be, um, you know, they're going to have a great um, contest and have a good challenge too in trying to slow that ball in. And uh, exactly the same can be said up the other end for Liz Watson. She really is a general for us in that attack end and she creates so much. She's so strong. Um, we saw that footage just a little bit earlier. She she gets knocked down a number of times in the game and she keeps getting back up again. So, um, you know, that, that will be a big part of, uh, who really gets the ascendancy in this game? Who can put the most pressure on that ball being fed into the circle? I must say, Liz Watson, I don't know if Deacon have got a, a stat for it, but she is easily the best player who spends the most time off her feet on court. <laughs> it is unbelievable. She's an absolute gun when it comes to that. One of the stats they did come up with, though, I mean, Fever were two wins and four losses after round six, and yet by the mm. season's end, they have spent more time in front than any other side. Being in front is their modus operandi. That's what they want to do, get out in front and stay in front. How important, we talked about the start before, but how important will that, that first whistle be to make sure that we are genuinely switched on? Really important. And you saw the intensity that they played that prelim final against the Lightning. It was full on, uh, right from the very first whistle in their attack play and in their defence play. So it, it'll be crucial to be able to step up to that. And I think, you know, one of the things that they try and do is uh, create, as you mentioned before, that scoreboard pressure. So they're almost forcing opposition teams into taking those riskier, longer two-point shots. And then they can just kind of chip away at the one-point shot. So, yeah, that is certainly the way they like to play. I mean, I'm pretty sure every team would like to be out in front <laughs> um, at any point. And Fever, as you say, are the best team at doing that, particularly later in the season. So, um, yeah, look, I, I think, as you say, that start's going to be really important, but keeping your composure and being able to just keep staying with the process, no matter what the situation, will be the key. Because as we've seen before and as we have spoken about, those margins can also be reeled in too. 
I must say, I don't really care how long we spend in front, as long as we're in front of the final whistle. That's the only time <laughs> I really care what the score is. Uh, it's been fantastic to get your insight, Chaz, as to how we're going to go about this Sunday. But every week on Vixens Live, as you well know, we get to catch up with one of the Melbourne Vixens players who joins us from the Queensland Hub. It's been amazing access to the Melbourne Vixens this year. They've given so much of their time. And one of the great recruits who's come back to the Melbourne Vixens this year and has been an absolute standout and joins us on Vixens Live. It's a very warm welcome to Kate Eddy. Teddy, welcome back <laughs> to Vixens Live for a second time this season. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here on Grand Final Week. <laughs> Talk us through it because this is the ultimate. This is what you've trained so hard for, played so long for. How has Grand Final Week been? And, and just how's the feeling amongst the group? Yeah, look, it's pretty exciting and I don't think, well, for me personally, it hasn't really sunk in. Um, we had our last training session today, but I think a lot of us are just kind of trying to stay present and stay, you know, like just day by day, minute by minute kind of thing, like just soak it all in because, you know, this does only happen once a year and so many girls have, you know, it's taken a very long time to get to a grand final since their last one. So I think all of us are just trying to enjoy it. And, yeah, it's a pretty good vibe up here. It's pretty exciting. Shez, you've had a lot to do with this team this year. How has it been from a coaching perspective? Now seeing one of your charges running around down there. I know you look after the goalers, but you love all the team. And this is the exciting time for a player's point of view, isn't it? No, oh, it's incredibly exciting. I mean, it's, as you say, it's the, the thing that you've been training so hard for. And this year, as opposed to any other year, it, it kind of, I think, is even more meaningful because of what the players have had to go through, what this group has had to uh, put to the side and, and do to get this season underway. So that hub life, Kate, I mean, it's been so great to get those little insights across the year into how you're going. What's the week been like, or the two weeks actually, because that even that's a little bit different to what you've experienced throughout the whole year. Yeah, so, well, last week we kind of just, um, I guess, trained as if we were going into a game on the weekend, but we were lucky that we did have the weekend off to kind of reflect and refresh for this big week this week. And then we had a training on Monday, gym session Tuesday, yesterday, Wednesday was completely off, and then training session today. And then it's um, optional gym, so a few of the girls who would like to go in and just have like an easy lift in the gym tomorrow. They'll go in and do that. And then we have captain's run and then the big day on Sunday. So yeah, it's kind of been business as normal. Like we did have the weekend off, but you know, everyone's always thinking Nettie at the moment until the big siren at the end and we're winning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know, it's all so exciting. But the big question is, Kate, Eddie, how's the foot? We've been wondering how that is. You missed, unfortunately, that semi-final. How's it pulling up? Yeah, look, um, I did train today and it has just like, it's as positive as it possibly can at the moment. And we are just giving myself every chance that we can to get myself out there. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed I'm very positive at the moment. Um, but yeah, just happy to see how it pulls up tomorrow, I guess, and then Saturday as well. But I'm very hopeful and I think Simone and physios and everything like that are pretty positive as well. Oh, good. We're all very, feeling very positive for you too. We're sending all our positive vibes. And one of the great things about this entire season across all the teams, but particularly with the Vixens, we've seen lots of new faces come on and uh, no bigger stage than that semi-final when Ali Smith had to step into your shoes. What role have you played with her as you've been off the court and trying to get yourself back in, but, you know, to get her in the right frame of mind to tackle that challenge? Yeah, look, Ali's like absolutely amazing and my job like has been pretty easy. She's like takes in anything and I think I didn't want to put too much pressure on her because, you know, she's got the talent and that absolutely showed in the semi final that she can go out there and smash it anyway. So I just think for me it was making sure that she felt confident and that she didn't feel like the weight was all on her shoulders at all. I just wanted her to go in you know, as light as a bird, just go in and do her own thing because she has so many strengths that, you know, played in that lightning game and she was just, she just absolutely smashed it. And I'm so proud of her. Um, and yeah, I just think that, yeah, just wanted her to go in and be herself. And I think that she did that. 
Mm-hmm. Now, Kate, a lot of the chat, of course, it should be, is all on Sunday. One thing that hasn't even been spoken about, have you got any plans for the off-season? What are you going to do once this season is all gone? Because 2020 probably feels like it's gone for about five years for you. What happens after Sunday? Um, well, we've got Sharon McMahon medal on Monday night, so that will be exciting. All of us girls have planned our dresses and our outfits and everything like that. So that's that'll be a nice way to kind of finish the hub life up here. Um, I think a lot of us girls are actually going to Movie World on Tuesday as well, you know, like be some little kids. We asked MJ if she wanted to come and she was like, no, 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 I don't like movies. And we're like, MJ, it's not like you don't sit and watch movies. <laughs> and other things there. And she's like, oh. And so we'll be off at Movie World. But I think I'm just um, heading down to Gold Coast for a, a like two weeks and then I'll try and head up to the Wit Sundays. But I haven't actually booked anything to come home as of yet because I guess I don't, I think I'm very grateful and lucky that I'm up. So I think I'm just going to try and stay up here um, in the freedom as much as I possibly can. And maybe I'll be back before Christmas. Who knows? <laughs> well, so there's a big game of netball to play before then. You know that you're doing it for Vic and doing it for all of Vic as well and all of Vic's right behind you. Have you got a message for our wonderful Melbourne Vixens family as we head into the most important clash of 2020? Oh, I think everyone at home has just been absolutely amazing and seeing all the videos on social media, we get messages of videos from all these different people from back home and it's just like amazing and it's really uplifting to see that everyone is you know, supporting us and, you know, although the stadium will be very different without all the Vixen fans in the stands, um, you know, like we do hear you and we do see everything that you guys are posting on social media and it's pretty amazing. Um, And, yeah, we do want to go out for everyone at home, um, you know, like as well as ourselves, but just hope everyone's staying safe as well and, you know, we are seeing you and, yeah, looking after yourselves. Well, you picked a good year to come back to the Vixens, Kate. It's great to have you here. You've had an amazing season so far. We look forward to it continuing for one more game on Sunday. Good luck. We're all behind you. Thank you. Kate, Eddie, great of you to join us in Grand Final Week. Shazza, I'll tell you what, this is what Grand Final Week's all about. You can feel the excitement, can't you? You can, you can feel that it's the energy's just coming out of it. I know she didn't play a couple of weeks ago, but she'll be ready to go on Sunday. Yeah, she will. And, you know, as we've spoken about, I've spoken to a few of the girls who are up in the hub um, and they're all seeming like they're feeling really relaxed and feeling just ready to go. And I think that that came off Kate Eddy too. What great news to hear that her foot has pulled up really well from that training session a little bit earlier today. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that that keeps happening up until the game, which is only a few days away. From a playing perspective and, and other players, that gives you a bit of energy as well. It buoys you a little bit, doesn't it? Even though Ali Kamin did a great job and whoever plays on the court has done a, a great job so far, but just having your, your best players out there, all combinations available, it does give you that, that little bit of a, a boost, doesn't it, heading into Sunday? Absolutely. And and you, that's exactly what you want. You want your entire squad ready to go and then you've got all the options in front of you. Um, and, you know, we know the story of Kate Eddy, who was injured, unfortunately, last year for the Swiss Premiership win and was sitting on the sidelines for that. So we're crossing everything that we can that she'll be out on the court on Sunday and be able to take her place there. Although, I mean, you know, the, there's so many different roles you can play and I'm sure that she'll contribute no matter what her role is. But if she's out there, I think that's a huge win for her individually, but also the girls. Absolutely. We've crammed plenty into Vixen's Live tonight. Let's take a break and back with more very, very soon. The all-new Nissan Duke featuring Apple CarPlay. First, you disrupt conventions. Then you say, let's improvise. We want to celebrate getting into the grand final with you all. Jump onto melbournevixens.com.au and snap up 15% discount storewide. Members log in and receive an additional 10%. Use the code STOREWIDE and celebrate with us. Join us for the first ever virtual Sherelle McMahon medal, streaming live to Facebook and YouTube on Monday the 19th of October 
at 7 p.m. Queensland time, 8 p.m. down here in Melbourne. Catch up with the team after the grand final and see who will be crowned the most valuable player for season 2020. Stay up to date via the Melbourne Vixens social channels. The Sherelle McMahon medal, and here's Sherelle McMahon. I mean, I know I make fun of it every time, but it's a great honour to have the MVP named after one of our greatest ever players. How does it feel leading into it? Have you got a, a feeling who you may virtually be handing the Sherelle McMahon medal to on Monday evening? <laughs> Yeah, it will be a strange one, won't it, uh, doing it from a distance. Um, do I have a feeling? Do you know what? I think this year it's been a really tricky one to pick because we've had different players really stand out at different times across the year. Um, we've had players off the court at times, missing games. So I'm not sure. I feel like, um, you know, our midcourt have been really strong this year. So I wonder if maybe it might come from one of those. I'm not sure. Uh, I can't wait it's, to see that. It's, it's going to be very cool exciting. Four or five players. <laughs> Thanks, Jess. I'm, I'm so sitting on the fence. I love them too much. I can't. I'm not going to. I'm not going to put one out there, and everyone else will get annoyed. I just think they're all great. I, I think there's so many of them that could rightly take that that uh, um, that medal. That medal being your medal, the Sherelle McMahon medal, of course. Make sure you keep up to date via socials and tune in, of course, Facebook and YouTube. Monday night, 8 o'clock if you've got daylight savings, 7 o'clock if you're lucky enough to be up in Queensland, Eastern Standard Time, up there. 2020 has been a genuinely strange year. We know that. It's been even more difficult for our members and, of course, supporters that are in Melbourne during the extended lockdown period, not being able to attend any matches this season. Team, of course, they're through to the grand final. We couldn't be more proud of them, but they can't take to the court, even though we're hosting it and we can't have our members in the stand. So I decided to add something to the dress for this weekend, something really special to the Melbourne Vixens dress. Let's take a look now. We are super excited to be in the grand final on Sunday and so honoured and proud to be representing Victoria. There is nothing like pulling on the navy blue dress and representing the big V. And hopefully um, we can bring that trophy back home to everyone in Victoria. So we've included a big V on the side of our dress that says we love Vic in the middle of it. And obviously back home in Victoria, we know that you guys are doing it so tough, but hopefully this big V represents everyone back home and you'll be right by our side the whole way on the grand final. So hopefully we have a good game and give you something to celebrate back home. Love seeing the big V. I mean, not everyone's study or lounge room is going to look like a Vixen's den like mine is, but what we do want is for everyone to get their Vixen's merchandise on and make sure that you're showing your support. And that's what it means, doesn't it, Chaz? The, the colours are there, the feeling's there. They know that we're behind them. Yeah, they do. They absolutely know we're behind them and they're getting a lot of messages through different channels, social media. Uh, they're getting so much love and they definitely feel that. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be dressing up. I'm going to be making sure that I've got everything I need, my scarf, my beanie, or it might be a bit hot for that, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm going to be doing everything I can, leaving nothing to chance. It's not going to be because I didn't put my scarf on that it doesn't let me don't get up. We're well, getting back to the superstitions. I like it. I don't mind it at all. I might just get in the suit and pretend I'm working again. We've always been grand finals. <laughs> uh, we're really looking forward to it. And the Melbourne Vixens and all of Nepal Victoria couldn't be more proud of the Melbourne Vixens members who have signed up, pledged their memberships, stayed on board with the Vixens despite not being able to attend games here in Melbourne. A big thank you to all of our members for their continued support through 2020. A list of our 2020 Melbourne Vixens pledged members will be displayed in the players' change room at Nissan Arena on Sunday. So even if you can't be at the grand final in person, you will be there with the team, which is absolutely sensational. All the players will see them as well. We take a look through our socials every week on, on Melbourne on Vixens Live. Our Melbourne Vixens members, they have been as passionate as ever. Let's take a look at some of the messages of support for our team heading into Sunday's grand final. Lorna Stewart, you've got this, girls. Remember... You've been the best team all season. Keep confident and give it everything. Proud of you all. Anita goes with Go Girls, be fearless and bring home the cup. Karina says Go Vixens. You'll hear the Vixens army cheering you so loudly from Melbourne. Ronald, it won't be an easy game, but the mighty Vixens will prevail. Gotta love the Vixens. You do indeed, Ronald. Don't worry about that. Always great to hear from our supporters. We've also got some high-profile supporters, the Melbourne Vixens. 
I mean, no one more high profile than my co-host here, but we did go out and get a bit of a message from some of our high profile supporters. Let's take a look at what they have to say. Hi, Vixens from the Seven News Melbourne team. We just wanted to wish you all the best for the big grand final on Sunday. We do. We know it's been a very different season in 2020, but it's a testament to your hard work and commitment that you've got this far under such difficult circumstances. Thanks for bringing smiles to the faces of so many Melburnians and Victorians during what has been a tough year. We are all behind you on Sunday. Go, Go Vixens! Vixens. Chris Golding from Melbourne United here, wanting to wish the Melbourne Vixens good luck in the Super Netball Grand Final. It's been a massive 2020. I know you've made some massive sacrifices to get here. So go out there, do it for Victoria, and bring home that Premiership Cup. Go Vixens! Hi, Tom Hawkins here from the Geelong Football Club. Uh, I wanted to, on behalf of myself and the playing group and all the football club at Geelong up here in Queensland, wanted to wish you the very best for your Grand Final on Sunday. We understand as uh, sports people um, how challenging the year has been. You've been up in a hub in Queensland for a long period of time like us so um, we can appreciate uh, how hard a year it has been for you to be away from family and friends, um, your minor premiers. Um, I know that we've got a few Cats fans uh, amongst the group so um, as fellow Victorians I wanted to wish you uh, all the best for your grand final. Go Vixens! Only time Timmy Watson gets behind the side, someone has to join him as well. How good is this? This, this is what it's all about. I've seen more on socials as well. Like everyone's just getting behind the Vixens. It really has just got that feeling, hasn't it? I mean, this is what Grand Final Week's all about. Yeah, that's right. And 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 this is it's nice that the girls can feel some of that love from up there that they would ordinarily have been feeling from down here, being minor premiers and then winning that major semi. They would have secured that home final, as we know. Um, but as we have spoken about, they they do feel all that love, and it, it's great to be sent be able to send that up there. Um, okay, I'm with them on on the bus and in the change rooms as well. The cardboard cutout of me and a couple of the other staff members. Uh, I didn't know this was happening, but there's a cardboard cut out there. So look, they've got support coming from all different types of angles um, and they certainly love it. And they deserve it too, because it has, um, as those guys are saying, it has been an epic season so far. The last time I saw you moving with a cardboard cut out was when you were recovering from your Achilles injury. Uh, we've also got an opportunity uh, before Sunday's match to come together as Melbourne Vixens members at 12 o'clock daylight saving time, we're going to come together, uh, join me and a couple of really special guests, members you should have received an email. Make sure you come and join us at 12 o'clock as we just prelude the grand final. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be amazing. We're going to make a day of it. So come and join us. It won't go for too long. It's just a, a chance to get some very special guests joining us all together as we're going to be in our Vixens gear before the big grand final as well. Now, every week on our social channels after Vixens Live, we run a competition, and this week it's a really important one. Who is going to be named the match MVP, the grand final MVP? You can win a wonderful hamper from our friends at Hampers with Bite. It's going to be on straight after this show. Jump on, have your guess. Who will be the MVP for the grand final? We know Teagues has already done it. She's been a, a grand final MVP before. Who is your tip, Sherelle? Oh, uh, you're putting me on the spot again, and I do like sitting on the fence with these things. Um, well, I could almost say maybe the one who was holding up the sign there, Joe Weston. I think she's due for a big one. But I'm actually going to go with the other t retiree, Katie Thwaites. I reckon she's going to be the match winner, the MVP for the Vixens on the weekend. I'm going to go down the other end. I'm having a guess at Emily Mannix. It's, that's, she's crucial. Or Kate Maloney, because she's also one of the favourites. Okay, you're right. They're all favourites. I don't care who you're A lot of it's from the Vixens, and they've got two medals that are clinking together after the game. That's pretty much all we care about. Get on to all the Vixens socials. Make sure you enter the competition. Name out MVP for Sunday's game, and hopefully you'll win a wonderful hamper from Hampers with Bike. That brings us to the end of Vixens Live and the grand final edition, Sherelle. Yet again, you've joined me. We haven't lost since you've joined me. Surely this bodes well leading into Sunday's game. 
Oh, I won't take the full load of the pressure of that, but fingers crossed. I mean, we're doing everything we can to make sure all the ducks are in a row. Um, and more importantly, that's exactly what they're doing up there in Queensland. So, look, I'm, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I feel a bit sick. I feel like crying sometimes when I think about the game. But um, I overwhelmingly just can't wait to see them get out there and uh, have a great game. Hopefully they can they can put out a really good performance they can be proud of. Thanks so much for joining us. As always, Shaz, it's great to have a legend of netball on talking all things Melbourne Vixens. Of course, everyone knows we have our members get together at 12 o'clock on Sunday. The game is 1 o'clock Sunday. Make sure you're tuned in to Channel 9 as our very own Melbourne Vixens host West Coast Fever, Nissan Arena, Brisbane, Sunday. It is 1 o'clock daylight saving time. Make sure you are joining us as they are doing it for Vic. Also, a huge thank you to our match day partner, Deakin. Deakin University, every course is backed by industry experts. So you'll get the job you want and with a degree that employers want. Deakin, progressive, real world learning. I'll be back same time next week as we wrap up season 2020. And hopefully I'll have a little friend with me in a Premiership Cup. Thanks, Sherelle. Thank you to everyone for joining us. Until next week and on Sunday, stay safe, stay well, and go the mighty vixens.